Welcome back, everybody, to Ripon in North Yorkshire. We're going to go and see David Elstop at Elstop and Elstop Fine Art and Antique Auctioneers yet again. And we're going to have an antiques quiz. It's easy to play along. Have a go. Let me know how good or bad you are. And this is Beat the Expert yet again. And if you've watched the previous two Beat the Expert with David Elstop from, of course, Elstop and Elstop, you know that he promised us big things. I mean, let's hope he's not a big disappointment. David, three objects that you're going to test the viewer's valuing skills. Come on! I've set myself up for a fall here. I think you have, yeah. exactly. Yeah, never build, build yourself up too high. I know. Well, I think they're fabulous, this little group. Go on. Are they worth big money? We want to talk about money. Come on, David. Two out of three are. Two out of three are two big money. Three. Okay, first yeah. one. Which one are you going to talk to us about? Oh, what's the estimate on that before we get into what it is? The estimate's seven to nine hundred pounds. Seven to nine hundred pounds. Take a look at it. Looks like a toy. Well, novelty again. Novelty is where the value is. Um, it's, sh they are sugar tongs. Okay, so for literally for picking up cubes of yeah, sugar. Yeah, sugar tongs. They're made by Corn and Charles, London silversmiths. So the solid silver in 1925 so solid silver oh. with enamel right so bang on the art we are deco we are period. talking art deco you like a bit of art deco. i do love art deco. i mean yeah. these are just fab yeah. i mean the lovely weight in the hand and just fun so you the legs move you open the arms and they, just fab what yeah. kind of person would have bought that in 1925 <sighs> i suppose it would have made, been an amazing gift for someone i think yeah and it wouldn't Perhaps be cheap. Perhaps a christening present, you know? Do you think so? Well, yeah. it's in the form of a Dutch doll. Okay, yeah, so you've got so the toy thing. So I wonder whether it could be a christening present. I mean, some christening present. Absolutely. <laughs> and it would have been a load of money. A lot of money. Oh, it's a load of money now. Um, just a charming thing. Again, I hate to keep banging on about it, but lovely clear marks on the back. I know, he does bang on about it. I must say, even Again. I'm getting bored of it, but for goodness sake. <laughs> I mean, hallmarks, David. What are hallmarks know, supposed to be? Hallmark. Clear and crisp. Hallmark envy. Um, the lovely, lovely thing. Novelty values everything with these. Yeah, we talked about novelty before. So if if we were looking at a, a pair of silver sugar tongs from 1925, you can buy them for 20 quid, yeah. can't you? I mean, you can buy a pair of Georgian ones for 40. I know, I know. Um, unless it's something very special, but yeah, it's just the novelty uh, thing. Novelty thing. Okay. I mean, I don't think anyone would use these. I think yeah. they would just go into a cabinet and be looked at. And Curiosity, yeah. A bit like me, they'd just get them out and have a look at the hallmarks. Uh, yeah, exactly, and, and get very excited <laughs> about crisp hallmarks. <laughs> you really need, do need to I get do, out a I bit more. Do, Seriously? I do, I need to stop looking at hallmarks. <laughs> yeah, you do. Um, ha I've got to tell you, and let us know if you have seen anything like this before, because I haven't. I've never seen that before. It must be rare. Rare, I've seen a, a pair sold in another sale. Yeah over the last few years. A pair of? Sorry, well, when I say a pair, one. Oh, one, singer, one, pair okay. Of and how much did it make? Um, in excess of 2,000 pounds. No. Yeah. But your estimate is? Seven to 900. So this is what we call in the trade a come and get me? Yeah, I, I think that auction result was a little bit of an anomaly. Okay. I, I think it was probably two people who really just got carried away. Well, that um, does happen, doesn't it, in the world of auctions? That's what it's about. Yeah, exactly. That's what um, you're hoping for. That's what I'm hoping for. Well, that's your job. That's my job. It is? Yeah, okay. get people bidding. Where is the market for these things? Um, I just think it might be something that appeals to the American market for Yeah, us. yeah. And it's easy yeah. to ship, isn't it? Easy to ship. I, th I could see the American trade showing this at a fair over there. Big um, money. And it would be big money. Big money. <laughs> okay, it would be big money. <laughs> Talking money, how much do you think it's worth? So David says seven to nine hundred pounds, and he's going to be selling it in a few seconds. You can watch it happen. But before you do that, think, how much do you think it's really going to make on the rostrum with David? See if you can beat the experts. See if you can beat his estimate. See if you can get closer to the final hammer price, which you have no control over. This yeah. is great. None of us have any control of an auction. It just whatever yeah. happens, happens. So, any predictions from you? The last one you saw made two grand. You've got seven to nine hundred. What's he going to sell for? I think it might touch four figures. 
might touch four yeah. figures. So yeah. over a thousand pounds. I had to think about that for a moment. <laughs> okay. Okay, here we go. David Elstorp is about to sell it. Let us know how close you get to the final hammer price. See you in a moment. Here we go, 700 to 900. If you're watching this in America, let me know how much you think they would cost there. 100 bid, 700 pounds it is. I'll take 750 next. It's 700 on my commission. Do I see 750? At 700 pounds, 750 I'll take. At 700, 750, 800 with me. 800 bid with me. At 800 pounds, 800 do I see 850? At 800 pounds, it's on my commission. At £800, all done. £800 to buy it all. Sold. £800, bang on, mid-estimate. Very interesting. Let me know, what do you think? Too cheap? Too expensive? What are your thoughts? Right, let's move on. Well, welcome back, everyone. I hope you uh, fared well with that lot. Um, certainly an interesting one. The, the next one we have coming up... Um, one of the high value ones I've picked out for us, David. Good, okay, yeah. you've been making some big promises. Let's I hope have, it's big money. Have. This one's good. Um, oh, right up my street, <sighs> this. Do you like this? Oh, it's a Rolex. Of course I like it, it's vintage, it's the Explorer. It's a Rolex Explorer, and this was a very, very nice find while we were doing a house clearance in County Durham. Right, okay, this we, is good, I we, like to hear this. We found this in one of the Rolex in a, inside a Mouseman wardrobe. Are you serious? Yeah. Okay. So it was a nice find. They are out there, these things. And did it have its, its box? Its box, papers. No. Um, it was bought from Northern Goldsmiths. I Do even, you know when? Um, I've got the date, actually. I think it was about 20 years ago. Right, OK. So this is one owner from you? Yes, I, do, I don't think this watch has been on. Oh, my goodness me. Listen, tell, tell the viewers I, about Rolex and what's happened to the world of Rolex in the last few years. I mean, it's, Rolex, it's better than money in the bank. Yeah. Um, if you're a Rolex retailer, you have to put your prices up by a certain percent every year you are told to. Yeah. Um, and, and by the way, you can't buy a new Rolex like this without waiting two or three yeah. years. And if you could, you'd pay a premium even on a new one. So Rolexes have gone ballistic, yeah. especially for sports. And this is an Explorer model, which is desirable. Yeah. Um, the, the links and the strap are, are nice. There's no play on them. There's no yeah. movement there. So that's what makes me think this watch has never been worn. Okay, how very interesting. Okay, what's the estimate? I think we've pitched it to four to six thousand. Four to six thousand. Yeah. Do you know how much it cost him twenty years ago? I don't. Well, I, I'm, I'm going to take a guess. Let us know if if, if, if you're if you know more. But a couple of grand. Yeah, I'd have thought so. Two thousand quid yeah. twenty years ago, and it's now four to six thousand. Yeah. What an investment! Is it going to stop? Because Rolex prices like this have just been increasing month on month. It has to come to a point where. They can't go any further. What, what, what are your I feelings? mean, uh, the watch market in general, I think, is extremely buoyant. Yeah. I mean, Omegas, Breitlings, sports watches, people want Particularly them. sports watches. OK, yeah. how very exciting. You have got me excited. <laughs> Four to six thousand. OK, David is about to sell this very rare Explorer watch. I think it's going to do incredibly well because they're just going ballistic. Over to you. What do you think? Put your answers down below. Let us know how you did. This is going to be very exciting, David. I do think this one could go on a little bit. Do you think it yeah. could go over six? I think it could. Okay. Yeah. Wow. All right, then. Good luck. You'll enjoy <laughs> this one. See you in a moment. David is about to perform. Here we go. Hold on to your seats. The estimate is four to 6,000. David thinks it'll do a bit better. Let me know what your thoughts are on the final hammer price. All right, gentlemen, steel Rolex Explorer bracelet watch. Um, from the same house actually, we've got a lot of bids on this. We're opening with a bid on in valuable of six and a half thousand. We'll take seven thousand next. I've got six five on in valuable, six thousand five bid on in valuable, seven thousand is the next bid. Seven, seven thousand on the telephone, seven thousand bid. So on the telephone it's seven thousand. I'll take seven five next. It's seven thousand on the telephone, seven five if anybody wants. It's seven thousand pounds. It's on the telephone. It's seven thousand. Then we all going to finish. Fair warning. I'm selling it then at seven thousand pounds. All done. 
Well, there you have it, David. Was rice a £1,000 over the top estimate, selling for £7,000? When will Rolex watch prices stop going crazy? Let me know what your thoughts are. Right, third and final item. Here we go. I knew that was going to be exciting, David. That was exciting. I adored that watch. My favourite thing so far. So okay. I wouldn't let you down. No you, no, you haven't. Not yet. But can you beat it? Can you give me something even more exciting? Well, uh, this one excites me more. OK, it's, here we go. See if it excites you. It's my favourite lot in the sale. In the whole sale? In the whole sale. I mean, look around you. There are, there are hundreds and hundreds of items in this sale. This is his favourite. All right, what if is I was, it? If I was allowed to, I would go for this one. Would you? If OK. All right. What is so special about that? So, this is a silver coffee service. Yeah. Um, Hallmark London, 1970. Okay, really cool. As you can see, it's a, it's a wonderful style and yeah. you know, modernist look to it with this bark effect finish. Before and you go on, how much is the estimate? <laughs> Estimates five to seven thousand. Five to seven thousand pounds. Okay, continue. So we've got a coffee pot, we've got a sugar bowl, cream jug and a spoon. And this was made by a contemporary silversmith called Gerald Benny. Right. Joe Benny was born in Hull in 1930. Okay. And set up a, a, a workshop in London. And he's widely regarded, I think, along with Stuart Devlin as the, the most collectible of the those kind of contemporary silversmiths. Yes, yes. Um, it's just a wonderfully sculptural thing. It's got that bark it's effect. It's got that bark effect yeah. and the lines and everything are just wonderful, wonderful quality. Do you think it's ever been used? I think it probably has, but I don't Do think, think a great so? deal. No. And the market for these things has really become quite buoyant in recent years, hasn't it? These tw this... 20th century silversmiths yeah. are, are becoming more They've been found and discovered, haven't they? Have. They have. Yeah. You know, Devlin and Benny and people like that. Now, there's great interest in the, the modern masters, really. Okay. What would you, you... You really like this, right? Even more than the Rolex. I think the Rolex was my favourite. But if you owned this, you wouldn't use it. Lovely clear marks again. Oh, stop it. Clear marks and David Elstop getting really boring now. OK, clear I, Chris I, marks. I wouldn't dare use this. So that's interesting, isn't it? <laughs> I just look at it and you hold just, it. Oh, no, here we go. <laughs> you'd get your hallmarks out. Oh, look. OK, you'd, you'd put it in a display case on a sideboard. Oh, on, a, on a decor sideboard. You just leave it and look oh, at it. Just put it on a, get an Archie Shine sideboard and put this on it. It'll look amazing. Uh, right, I'm getting, we'll have to come and visit your house and see what it looks like. Okay, so you're, you see this as just sculpture? I do. That's it? I mean, it's a wonderful in the hand. It's fabulous. And even down to the it's wonderful little sugar spoon. I mean, it's just... And all matching that bark effect. Delightful, all matching hallmarks. You see, what I love about this as well, it screams its period that it's from. It, when did you say, 71? 1970. No, 1970, it screams 70. So not that only was it made in 1970, it could have been a reproduction in 70. Yeah. It screams of that year with that bark effect. And he, and he has made for the royal family. There's, there's, really? there's pieces in the royal collections. Really? Um, okay, you're selling it to me. I do like it a lot. I don't know whether... I would swap it for a Rolex. How do you feel? What would you prefer? Rolex, obviously. Um, estimate again, remind us. Five to seven thousand. Five to seven thousand. What, what, what are your thoughts? I think we're about right. Do you think so? Yeah. OK. OK, the market is very buoyant for this 20th century stuff. Great designer. What do you think? Five to seven thousand pounds. This is the final item for you to perform on. David is about to sell it. Let us know how you did. So David, five to seven thousand. Good luck. Thank you. Okay, special thing. Three-piece solid silver coffee service by Benny Royal Silversmith. David Elstop's favourite item, five to seven thousand pounds is the estimate. Let us know what you think of the value. I'll take four thousand two. Four thousand I'll take four thousand two for the jewel Benny. At 4,000 bid, 4,002 I'll take, 4,002, 44, 4,006, 4,006 bid, at 4,006 to seek 48, at 4,006 bid, 4,008 I'll take, at 4,006, 4,008, 4,008 bid, at 4,008, 4,008 bid, 5,000 bid, at 5,000 bid now, 
I had 5,000 quid then the Dural Benny service. I had 5,000 pounds all the time. Well, there you have it, £5,000. I bet David Elstop thinks that's just too cheap, but only because he loves it. But more importantly, what do you think of it? David, it's always a great pleasure to see you. Thanks for showing us these fantastic things. We'll be back, I'm sure. So, listen, thanks for watching. Don't forget, let us know how you did down below. Did you beat the expert? Let's hope you did. OK, see you next time. I'm David Harper. Cheerio. I'm David Elstop. Bye for now. Bye-bye. Was that okay or not sharp enough at the end there? Watch yeah. it back. I think you'll find it's yeah. absolutely... Perfect and sharp. Thanks again, David. Great to see you. And thanks again to you for watching. Cheerio.